Shut up. Stop talking, Kumashi. Why do you have to look like that but have such a deep voice? So annoying. If you weren't cute, you wouldn't even have the right to serve me. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we're having a look at the uniquely styled ghost princess of One Piece, Perona. Perona first appeared in the series as an antagonist during the thriller Bark Arc. Along with Gecko Moria, Dr. Hogback, and Absalom, she was one of the Mysterious Four, a group in charge of a legion of zombies on the island ship. At the time, she was the epitome of a spoilt brat, often being quite childish and immature. Speaking of childish, very little is known about her upbringing except that she once had a pet bear named Kumai, which is pretty much the Japanese equivalent of naming your dog Doggy. Ten years before her first introduction in the series, she met Gecko Moria and joined his pirate crew simply for the fun of it. She came to see Moria as sort of a father figure, seeing him more as a method of protection because she primarily looks out for her own personal well-being. Perona has an obsession with cute things and will actually only allow someone to work for her if they're cute. In the case of her servant Kumashi, Perona keeps him around because he looks cute, but insists that he never speaks because his voice isn't cute. This obsession is so extreme that it was, and possibly still is, Perona's dream to take everything cute in the world and turn them into zombies to serve under her. Despite all of her personality traits, Perona was an incredible asset to Gecko Moria's crew, primarily because of her devil fruit known as the Horo Horo no Mi. This fruit is a fairly unique paramecia type that allows the user to conjure and control ghosts. Now these ghosts have a wide variety of interesting abilities, the first and foremost being that they are immune to any sort of physical attacks. Although it should be known that there are of course certain abilities in the world, such as Bartholomew Kuma's Niku Niku no Mi, that are able to combat them through the power of pushing intangible materials, a category that the ghosts certainly fall into. The ghosts themselves are referred to as hollows, and the most common type of hollow used by Perona is the negative hollow. When these hollows pass through an individual, they immediately fall down onto their knees and become extraordinarily negative and depressed about themselves, sometimes to the point of wanting to commit suicide. Perona is also capable of physical attacks by producing toku hollows, which are mini ghosts that have the power to create shockwave style explosions. The devastation of the explosion is in direct correlation to the size of the hollow, meaning that the bigger the ghost, the bigger the explosion. And rather powerfully, Perona is able to connect her consciousness to multiple hollows, allowing her to create a ghost network, whereby she can observe and monitor any area containing one of her hollows. And quite notably, she can also use her power to create an astral projection of herself as a hollow, which is essentially her soul given visual form. This projection is also impervious to any physical damage, however it is also completely intangible, and therefore unable to cause any damage itself, so it is mainly a psychological form of attack. Furthermore, it comes with the downside of requiring Perona's consciousness to depart from her own body, leaving it essentially defenseless. With these abilities in mind, she rather easily defeated powerful characters such as Luffy, Zoro, and Frankie with the simple use of negative hollows. However, Perona would go on to meet her match in the very unlikely character of Usopp. When her negative hollows passed through him, he was simply immune, because in his own words, he was already so negative. Perona then used her astral protection to combat the Straw Hat member, but he did eventually find her real body and managed to scare her into defeat by lifting a fake 10 ton hammer and threatening to use it on her. As the hammer came down, it exploded and Perona was left unconscious and defeated. When she did finally awaken, Perona clearly saw the likelihood of Moria being defeated and planned to steal the Thousand Sunny and leave Thriller Bar. However, she would be interrupted by Bartholomew Kuma, who eventually asked her the very vague question of where she would like to go on a trip. Getting caught up in his question, Perona described a dark, damp island with a castle filled with malice, before snapping back into reality. Perona prepared to face off against Kuma, but was swiftly disappeared by the Warlord due to his Devil Fruit abilities, much to the confusion of those observing. As it turns out, Kuma had sent Perona to Kuraigana Island, the home of Dracul Mihawk, and the location where Roanoa Zoro would eventually be sent to as well. After Zoro was sent there, the two seemed to develop some form of trust, and Perona would be present in the room when Zoro begged Dracul Mihawk to train him. During the time skip, it would appear that Perona took up residence on Kuregana Island, living with both Zoro and Mihawk. After Zoro's two years of training, Perona escorted him back to Sabadi Archipelago and assisted in the newly reformed Straw Hat's escape by using her negative hollows to hold back a platoon of marines. On her way back to Kuregana Island, Perona revisited the now empty thriller bar and found the lifeless body of Kumashi, much to her joy. 
And the last thing we've seen of Perona to date was on a cover story where she was tilling the land of Kuregun Island with Mihawk and the island's native mandrills. Some more fun facts about Perona. Perona is one of only two side characters to have been known to associate with two of the seven warlords of the sea, in her case being Gekko Moria and Dracul Mihawk. The other character is Galdino, who associated both with Sir Crocodile and Buggy the Clown. Perona is a consistently high ranking character in the popularity polls, being the fourth highest ranked female character in the fifth poll, and the fifth highest ranked female character in the sixth poll, behind Nami, Robin, Boa Hancock, and Vince McRaju. Perona suffers from Katsaridophobia, which is the fear of cockroaches. Her condition is so bad that she began screaming and crying when Usopp covered her in fake ones. And finally, a truly useless fact. After the time skip, Perona appears much more mature, however she still carries a teddy bear around, indicating that she is at least still somewhat obsessed with cute things. And that pretty much does it for the Ghost Princess Perona. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. Please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.